Welcome to Alchemy Uncensored, a podcast presented by Alchemy Search, a team of professional financial and tax recruiters. Our podcast is dedicated to providing valuable insights into the financial and tax sector of the UAE by discussing the challenges and opportunities faced by employers and job seekers. Alchemy Uncensored is the perfect podcast for those looking to gain a competitive edge in the finance, accounting and tax industry of the UAE. Stay informed on the latest job market trends, developments and conversations to stay ahead of the game. Tune into our podcast to be part of this insightful conversation. Hi, I'm Rutika and I'm a specialized tax recruiter at Alchemy Search in Dubai. Today we have the pleasure of having Thomas Vani as our guest speaker for the tax podcast. So Thomas is the founder and managing partner at Orifa, which is a boutique tax consulting firm based in Dubai and having offices in Saudi Arabia and Belgium. He's a lecturer at Sorbonne and Middlesex universities and he holds two masters in law and taxation. He is actively involved in publishing tax articles as well. So thank you Thomas for joining us today at this podcast. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so firstly we just wanted to understand about your professional journey as the founder of a tax consulting firm in the GCC. Sure. Um yeah, it's been it's been 6 years now. Um we started off in 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 2017. Um and I must admit it wasn't it wasn't always the easiest of journeys. Um f- people only see the outside and then they see you know people working things being published and what not but uh i can tell you that once you you cut the umbilical cord with an employer and you're out there on on your own it is very different um approach to things and it's very different uh mindsets um i made mistakes da- down the road for sure uh but luckily had a couple of good people to to counsel me with the within the firm outside of the firm support from family and 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 what not and very happy to be where we are right now 6 years later a team of 30 people and very happy with where we are currently in the market so since 2017 there has been a complete tax revolution in this region and i wanted to know your thoughts on how the market is reacting to it like how are the businesses reacting to the changes in the tax landscape here yeah I mean it's it's been interesting um I I arrived in January 2017 and and you barely had any tax experts in in the UAE the ones that you met and that were around for a couple of years a lot of people were asking what what are you doing in 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 this country <laughs> right and then it kind of developed quite quickly from there excise tax in 2017 VAT in 2018 2019 economic substance regulations and now yeah. corporate income tax in the UAE obviously the in in the other countries around uh, the UAE notably Saudi the situation was and is very different uh, historically had um a lot of taxes already um i think it's an interesting dynamic to see right now to compare vat to corporate income tax because for vat the approach for a lot of businesses was we give it to the accountants to the finance team and yes. it's a pure kind of reporting kind of thing and maybe you've seen this in in recruiting as well whereas for corporate income tax it mm. seems to take on more importance because it will hit their bottom line their right. profits after tax are going to be going to be impacted the interesting thing i think when you compare the two is the 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 risks that you run actually with vat and excise tax in terms of potential penalties are far greater than they are for corporate income tax oh okay because the rates are high yeah let's mm. say 5% for vat on gross 50% or 100% for excise tax on the value of the product. Right. And for corporate income tax is merely on the on the profit. Right? Okay. So if you do do something wrong, the penalties will be far less for corporate income tax. Um nonetheless, you know, you see that businesses take corporate income tax a bit more serious where there's still a bit way to go is um in structuring and restructuring and in mergers and acquisitions we still don't see enough focus on on the tax aspects but i think that'll grow as we have more and more taxes in 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 the uae really um but i think there's there should be more attention to uh, given to that um 
so I think that there's definitely room for improvement for the tax market to still uh, evolve a bit. Yeah, right. And if we were to compare the tax markets in UAE and KC, what do you think are the most significant driving factors or key challenges in both of them? Yeah, there are two very interesting markets and we're, we're lucky to, to be present in both of them. And so we know them very well. Saudi is the market of, of the volume and the size. Um, right. All businesses that we deal with are big. In the UAE, the economy is uh, smaller compared mm -hmm. to Saudi Arabia, and you can potentially deal with more mid-sized businesses or with local subsidiaries that have a smaller size than, uh, than for example, in Saudi Arabia. There is a difference in sophistication, though. Okay. Usually the, the UAE market, in terms of the types of... Um, the types of transactions, the types of income is more varied, is a bit more sophisticated. In Saudi Arabia, you'll find much more of like the the traditional, I'm a buy-sell company, I'm a trading okay. uh, company or simpler mm. uh, products. Um, you especially see this in the financial services sector where in the UAE is, is very, very much advanced in that. Saudi Arabia is much more traditional financing. Like, for example, trade financing is not very developed okay. in Saudi, whereas in, in the UAE, it's it's much more developed. The other thing as well is, that I think, in terms of the needs of businesses there, in the UAE, the need is very much, from a tax point of view, to focus on international tax, due to the yeah. UAE being a smaller jurisdiction, right. very open, and a lot of foreign businesses, a lot of foreign direct investment. Whereas in Saudi, it's much more domestic. So it's harder to find someone in Saudi who specializes in international tax. Right. There's one major dynamic, I think, that's going to shape things in the in the coming years to come. That's all of the giga projects in, in Saudi Arabia. We assist a lot of businesses that are now winning tenders, mm -hmm. winning contracts there. And you really see that the, the, the amount of investment put into... Projects like, for example, Neom, the Red Sea development, but also a couple of projects, urban development projects in, in Riyadh, Riyadh Air, for example, the, the new airline. All of those are really driving a lot of investment into Saudi to the point where you can see, for example, today it's very hard to find office space in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh particularly, oh, because, okay. because of the growth. Really. Right. Yeah. I think that's a great perspective on the KC market as well. So given your experience in more mature tax markets previously, what do you foresee uh, is the future of tax in this region? Um, I think the dynamics are, are different uh, here than, for example, in, in, in Europe. Um, I think the, the tax function should develop further, become a bit more autonomous. Today, it very often sits under the CFO and is a bit limited by, by the finance function. I think there's room to give more independence, more power, more autonomy and more budgets to heads of tax. I'm not just saying that because they would be our clients, but also simply because I do believe um, it makes sense. Um, I think we will see particularly in the UAE more disputes. Um, and I think those disputes should be evolving into disputes more around the material aspects rather than just the procedural aspects as, as they do today. Um, and then again, particularly for the UAE, I think transfer pricing is, is, is really one of the areas I would say potentially misunderstood by, by a lot of businesses. Um, and also there's not that many people who actually properly grasp uh, the, um, the whole concept. So I think that's probably something to, to look forward to. I, I don't think it'll evolve in the same way as it does in, in some other jurisdictions where there's maybe heavy administrative litigation, much more principle-based discussions w between tax authority and, and taxpayers. I, I, I don't believe that that's going to be the case. Yeah. So yeah, I completely agree with you. I think as the law matures, I think more companies would see the value addition which, when, or which tax professionals can bring to the organization, which is currently like, you know, it's more of a finance-centric function right now. So, yeah, I hope to see this change coming in in, <laughs> in the coming months and years. So, as a business owner, what are the key challenges that you see in this market? I, I think uh, one complication is that the regime, 
um, is a bit of a moving target. Um, we constantly have a new uh, decisions coming out and, and positions evolving from from the regulators, the ministry or or, or, or the FTA. That's not just in, in, in an issue in the UAE and in Saudi also it evolves relatively quick. Um, evolution is good. Uh, I will say that. Um, but for for taxpayers, um, certainty and stability mm. is also very often favored. Um, and I think uh, when it comes to, for example, UAE corporate income tax in the next couple of years, because it's a bit of a moving target, currently there's a number of questions outstanding as to their application uh, yeah. in terms of corporate income tax. And those blanks are probably going to be filled in bit by bit, a bit like we saw with VAT as well. It, right. took, it took some time and then sometimes there were positions that some that a person wouldn't expect and then you need to go fix things. That's, you know, that, that happens, unfortunately, when you implement a new, um, a new regime. Um, as for our business, because you're asking for the perspective as a business owner, I think what we see is um, we see a lot more inquiries for our services naturally. Um, and I think towards the first filing deadline, which for most businesses is going to be September 2025, mm -hmm. I think we will see um, a fair amount of activity on, until then. Um, our practice is structured, though, in, in such a way that we also do a lot of policy work, which is not necessarily dependent on these kind of deadlines. And we do a lot of structuring restructuring and, and M&A work, which is, again, also not really tied to that to that deadline. And so that's going to keep us busy, you know, pretty much forever, uh, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so at Orifer, I see that there is a lot of focus on tax trainings and academics in respect of GCC taxes. So what are your tips for fresh graduates who are looking to make a career in taxation or even experienced professionals who are looking at upskilling? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's true. I mean, we, we, we place a lot of emphasis on, on, on training and the technical side of, of things because I think it's important for people to, to acquire those skills. Um, recommendations for freshers is, um, and, and this is easy for me to say, and when I was young, uh, they told me this, but I wouldn't accept it, is just focus on your learning, not necessarily on, on your salary. Um, <laughs> Again, when I was young, I didn't I didn't follow that either. So I'm not sure if I'm in the best position to to really recommend that to people. But I think your your technical foundation in the in your first initial couple of years is is fundamental. Um, this technical foundation you can acquire through, for example, the the certificate that we have together with uh, with Middlesex. Um, so as from October, we have a two month long program, 48 hours, okay. uh, comprehensive GCC taxation with lectures from, from big four industry advisors. Um, it's a very comprehensive program. It's very good for freshers. It's good for people who want to change career. Maybe you're right. in a finance function and you want to say, I want to focus only, only on taxation or even a refresher, um, okay. as well. It's more of an introduction, um, there's other um, institutions as well in, 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 in the UAE which uh, where you can follow uh, tax classes. There's not that many. Um, so I, I provide some, as you said, at, at Sorbonne University, but also at, at the DIFC Academy. Those are places okay. where you can uh, get, a, get an intro into, uh, into taxation. So, I mean, the main thing is it's, it's, it's hot right now. People, it's in demand. But obviously, you need to have the, the technical skills also to, to be able to help your future employers. Of course. I think this is really interesting because I'm asked this question a number of times every day. Like, you know, there are people who want to relocate to this region and they want to get familiar with the GCC taxes, though they are very well versed with corporate taxes or VAT in their countries. Mm -hmm. But just to get an overall idea of uh, the GCC tax landscape. Yeah. And also there are a lot of uh, finance professionals in this region who just want to get that experience 
experience just to have that technical knowledge before they can yeah. have that practical experience so i think this would really be useful for them so corporate tax is currently the most buzzing topic particularly in the finance and tax circles and with this trend i see a lot of startups coming up in this region so they are making a foray in tax consulting and it's not just the startups but even law firms or consulting firms which have never traditionally been in tax but now they're setting up the tax practice with the help of experienced professionals so do you think there is a lot of competition in this market um i so i think the 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 market can accommodate <coughs> to all of these players i think um um I'd say they're very welcome. Yeah, you know, it's good to have more people to have contrasting ideas to exchange ideas. Uh, a similar thing happened when VAT was introduced in in 2018. You saw a couple of firms pop up. Some today are not there anymore. Some are, are still there and have uh, grown stronger. Um, it's true that more um, more companies are looking uh, at it. Um, but as I said, yeah, there's, there's, there's work enough for everybody. So, yeah. So I wish them best <laughs> of luck. So if you were to describe your firm in three words, what would it be? I had to think about this one, um, a bit because you're limiting me to, to three <laughs> words. Um, and I'll, I'll I hope you'll allow me to, to talk a bit around them. Um, I think number one is research. Um, we, like to conduct research, we like to go deeper in, in, into things. Um, I think people in the market have observed that as well. Um, the second one is fun. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have a lot of pleasure in, in what we do. Um, and I hope that's the case for the whole team as well. We do very nice assignments. We do assignments for very nice clients, very nice global brands, big big brands. It's it's fun to to go deeper into uh, into certain aspects for for these groups. Um, so I think we 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 have we're serious people, but I do think we have we have fun. We have board games in the office, for example. <laughs> that was an invention of one of the colleagues. Um, and then the last one I think, which is particularly um, important to me, is inclusion. Okay. Um, so we're uh, we're an equal opportunity employer. So we will not make any difference between people uh, in terms of where they come from. Uh, and I, I think the um, we try consciously to to get a mix always of people um, to be able to contrast ideas uh, yeah. really to make people work together. That's in the end part of the beauty, which is which is Dubai. It's an international place where a lot of people come. So why not take a benefit from you know, from all these ideas and, and yeah. ask people, how did you do this in, in your home country? Perhaps that's a better way than, than how we are doing it today. This brings a lot of fresh perspectives to the yeah. way of doing things. Yeah. Lastly, just a few questions uh, about yourself. <laughs> sure. So just the fun ones. So okay. basically wanted to know what, what is the thing you like the most about Dubai? Um, Probably for me, it's 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 Dubai and Riyadh, maybe a bit because okay. I spend a lot of time there. <laughs> but I think particularly for Dubai, um, it's a very um, dynamic and ambitious place, and you can really feel that that drive towards uh, development, the drive towards trying to be ahead of things. Um, I think that's something that perhaps sometimes I come from Europe. Sometimes I think we've forgotten what that what that means to be um, ambitious about things. We're too hung up in, in the past, maybe sometimes. Um, and I think Dubai has has a good quality of life as well. Um, I like to spend time in Riyadh as well. I think Riyadh in, in, in a certain way is, a couple of years ago, I would have said it's, it's 15 to 20 years behind Dubai. It's coming much, much, much closer right now. It's a very... Okay. Uh, much more, it's a very pleasant place to be. It's got nice restaurants. It's got nice places to um, to go to. So, I think in in you know th those are very attractive places to to go to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm hearing really positive things about Riyadh from you know people I'm speaking with these days. Every month, I spend a lot of time there. Okay. Um, but I also travel to the other GCC countries. Right. And occasionally yeah. outside. Um, 
there's always a lot, a lot mm-hmm. going on. So I, I, I have a luckily a very understanding wife and <laughs> allows me to, to, to do all of these things. Um, but yeah, it, I think in, in our profession, uh, yes, you can do a lot of things, um, online, but it's also important to go and see people and to go and yes. feel people. And there's nothing yeah. better than stepping inside a tax authority and the, and the building and observing the people to understand how they really work and what to yeah. expect uh, from them. So it really makes a world of difference because being there, giving that face time to clients or yeah. even the government authorities, understanding how things work there, I think you get more insights when you're physically yeah. over there, I think. So which, what is your favorite way to spend the weekend? <laughs> um, I was referring to my very understanding wife because I, I have a... <laughs> I have a special weekend, given that the work weeks are not the same in the UAE and Saudi. Yeah. So um, I also work on Sundays. Um, <laughs> uh, but when when I'm not working, I'm trying to really spend as much as time as possible, good quality time with with my wife and daughter. So um, that's really what the what the weekend is all about. And there's Saturdays I absolutely do not work at all. Uh, that's a a black day or whatever you want to call it. So, you know, that's a one reserved yeah. really exclusively. So right. that's a, trying to find a way to, to balance uh, things really. Yeah. Yeah. As a business owner, it would be difficult to have that privilege of a weekend, I think, because it's just a 24 seven job. It goes on and on. It is. You're, you're, you're never completely switched off No. Yeah. So which is your favorite holiday destination? Uh, that's a tough one, Rutika. Um, I, I like to travel a lot. Um, it, it's a bit different though these days traveling with a with a young child. Uh, that limits a bit your possibilities. <laughs> yes, I know that. <laughs> to go wherever you want to go. Um, I I went to Bali this summer. I enjoy that quite a bit. Uh, but I I you know I enjoy a lot going to the Mediterranean countries, for example. But equally so, I enjoy a couple of days in in, in, a, in a big city. So it's it's. It's hard. I think probably above all, I like the change. I yeah. like the variation. So thank you so much for being here with us today. And it was a really insightful discussion. So we really hope that you enjoyed this discussion. And I hope the tips and advice were very useful for you. So stay tuned for our next tax episode. Thank you.